Heronkorn Mill is situated in an area of outstanding natural beauty on the banks of the River Beela in Beedham, Cumbria. This mid-18th century mill is nestled in a valley, characterised by gentle limestone hills. The mill is surrounded by farmland to the west, with Milnthorpe and Dallon Park Estate to the north. The River Beela is a magnet for wildlife in the area, and the mill site itself attracts an abundance of flora and fauna. In early summer, the long meadow grass outside the barn is host to a variety of wildflowers. Daisies and buttercups stand alongside ladies' smock, forget-me-nots and vetch. The rocky beach below the limestone weir creates the perfect conditions for celandine and the pink spikes of butterbur which develop gigantic green leaves later in the season. The dense hedgerows that border the site provide cover and food for small mammals and birds throughout the year. Summer's flowering shrubs give way to hips and berries come the autumn. Just above the weir, along the mill track, an island is hidden from view. Behind me is an island on the River Beela between the A6 and the weir down at Heron Corn Mill. This island is an absolute haven for wildlife and in the spring it's covered in snowdrops. And then we have wild garlic and now you can see ground elder is in flower. This is the flower of the ground elder and it's like a lacy froth all along here but some of it's turned now, the petals have fallen and this is the seeds heads now. Well we're on the river bank um, at the side of the island on the road down to Heron Corn Mill and the bank now is lush and very full of plants. This is the bigger leaf of the butterbur. The butterbur flowered in early spring and now we've got these big big leaves like umbrellas shading other things or allowing other things to climb over them like the stitchwort which is, has another name, cleavers, and this can stick onto your clothes. These are probably six or eight foot long and they trail about over other plants. We've got the nettles and the trees, the ash, the sycamore, the limes, all giving a wonderful, rich um, environment for insects and other life that's on the riverbank here. a safe haven for a pair of nesting mute swans. This year they successfully hatched four cygnets. The female pen takes her young upstream to teach them to forage for food along the riverbanks. At barely a week old, these cygnets are vulnerable to a range of predators including otter, heron, foxes and birds of prey. The cob hovers close by, guarding his family from danger. Two months later, only three survive. The adolescents are now as big as their parents and are starting to shed their dull plumage. Young swans usually leave their parents at six months and already our trio are starting to defend themselves. Whilst the rich nutrients of the riverbank supports a wonderful array of plant life, some species are less welcome than others. Well, this is a hemlock water dropwort, and it's uh, a member of the Umbellifera family. Uh, an Umbellifera means that these flower heads, they're very flat on the top, but it, it means that the flowers are on individual stalks of different lengths, so that the outside stalks are longer than the ones in the centre. And the leaves, these are rather parsley-like in shape. And the stalks, these are very ridged. It's actually quite poisonous to humans and to animals. 
This is Himalayan balsam and this has become quite an invasive plant of riverbanks. It um, will flower with beautiful pink and white flowers um, which will produce seed heads which pop and disperse six to eight hundred seeds per plant. So we pull it up because it really is crowding out, shading out native species. Uh, my name's Ian McMurdo, I'm Chairman of uh, Milnthorpe Anglers and also a Trustee of South Cumbria Rivers Trust. Um, Milnthorpe Anglers have this piece uh, of, of the River Beeler from, uh, from Dalham Estate uh, and it's a really special little stream. Um, it rises, well you can see over there, that's, um, that's Falton Knot, Lupton Beck runs round the back of that and then becomes um, Falton Beck and then Killington, uh, the drain from there is, uh, is Peasy Beck and Stainton Beck over there, they all combine in, uh, to, to make the River Beeler here. And all those catchments are limestone, so uh, because it's limestone you get a, a lot of alkalinity in the water and the pH, is, which is a measure of the alkalinity, is really high, it's 8.5. So you get this tremendous growth of water crowfoot and you get all sorts of, uh, of life on the bottom of the stream, making it very, very rich. South Cumbria Rivers Trust train up people who sample the river and check the little beasties, the little invertebrates that live on the, on the river floor. And they're used like the canaries in the coal mine. If they're, if they're there in big numbers and all the species are present, then you know that the water quality is good and there hasn't been any pollution. Straight away, bullheads, yes. And is that a small bullhead there? Or That's is one that of this year's bullheads, yeah. There's another name called Miller's Thumb. When the miller was, was sort of checking the, the quality of, of his product coming off the wheels, he was always doing that. And That's right. Supposedly the miller had a flattened thumb for doing that. Yes. And you can yes. see that fish has got a very sort of flattened head. Flattened head, yes. That's a, a heptagenid. Um, it's a flattened nymph, uh, a stone clinger. It clings onto the stone with its flattened body to uh, ensure it doesn't get blown away in the current. Can you see its gills on the side of its body? But those are that are quivering all the yes, time. Yes, so it's got the external gills. gills. Yeah. Um, what, one of the best things you can do to sort of help uh, help rivers recover is to produce these fences here because then you exclude the stock and they don't puddle the rivers and you get this amazing growth of, uh, of, of riverside vegetation which is good cover for otters and ducks and w all sorts of waterfowl and things. The grass that it grows is, is home for an awful lot of short-tailed field voles. When we put the fences in we realised there was voles running around in front of us in big numbers. So we put some, uh, some barn owl boxes up and uh, within a fortnight there was a pair of kestrels took up residence and then uh, the next year there was a barn owl and she raised eight young I think that year and they've been breeding ever since. The river has changed since the early 90s in that the fish pass has opened up at Heron Corn Mill and um, this stretch here above the mill was always just brown trout. Uh, uh, nowadays, because the fish pass has opened up, we get salmon and sea trout coming through. Um, the salmon spawn up in the top of Peasy Beck and on Stainton Beck probably any time from uh, October, November, December. The, the little eggs hatch out in April, they spend two years in the river and then they descend as silver smolts and go down to the sea and uh, hopefully come back two years later or three years later as, as grills or as salmon. A plentiful supply of fish attracts a regular visitor to the mill. Our namesake, the heron, can often be found stalking the shallow waters beneath the weir. There are just 18 pairs of heron roosting at the heronry in Dallam this year. Numbers are down on previous years due to low eel numbers. However, our heron is happy to dine on the salmon and trout that jump the fish pass and the small plump bullheads that hide beneath the rocks. As the heron flies back to his roost, he follows the course of the beeler. It meanders through Milnthorpe and the private parkland of Dalham Estate. Public footpaths cut through the land, offering wonderful views of the river and glimpses of Dalham's resident deer herd.
tall reed beds provide another habitat for invertebrates and waterfowl to thrive in. Finally, the riverbanks give way to the salt marshes at Sandside, where the Beeler continues its journey into the Kent estuary and flows out towards the Irish Sea. This short, vibrant river not only provides a rich diversity of habitat for wildlife, but continues to drive the wheel at Heron Mill as it has done for centuries.